Well, welcome back to another episode of the Shine and Arapaho Productions podcast. I am your host, Darren Brown. I am also a senior content producer here at Shine and Arapaho Productions. This podcast uh, has been around a very short time, and what we're trying to do is, uh, man, promote and uplift the uh, Shine and Arapaho tribes beginning with, and we'll work our way into other tribes as we go along. But right now, we want to focus on what's going on within the tribes, and with me today is Megan Musket, and you are your your title is uh, federal programs administrator, right? Yes, it is here in, in the uh, in the education department. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, can first of all explain to me what that is? Well, basically, I want to say I'm the executive director's kind of right hand man. I I just my knowledge in federal programs, my desire to constantly look, you know, research, look at things, study. And when she's not able to go to meetings or be present, then that's where I will step in and go and represent the Department of Education. Okay, federal programs, uh, and I think most people who are are listening in or watching and in Indian country know that uh, without those federal monies, man, uh, the, the, the tribes will be a lot different. You know, we, we obviously we have gaming these days, which is great. But a lot of things get started or even come out of federal money, right? And it's, and it's you can't just say, okay, here's sign here, and you get the money. <laughs> There's a lot more to it. And, and so you've been working with them for a while, right? Yes. I um, have been working in federal programs uh, grants since um, I first started here in 2012. Uh, and um, I started out with the Travel Youth Program, which is a Department of Justice grant and then we were awarded the State Tribal Education Partnership Grant. Step. Yep, STEP in 2000, and I think it was 2012. And I actually came on there as a um, education specialist. So I was actually working in the schools. And the goal of that program was to actually get um, tribes educating and understanding federal grants and federal programs like Title I, Title II, um, and what those do in the schools and how those funds are utilized. And so for three years, that's what I consistently did. I built relationships with public schools, uh, administrators, teachers, the community members, and then the State Department of Education and building an understanding of what these title grants were and how these monies were supposed to be utilized. And then that built more knowledge of what questions we should be asking the school. Oh, and come how, on now. There we go. Yeah, and how <laughs> and how they are, how those funds are reaching our tribal students. And so that's what the first step grant was a part of. And it's actually a pilot grant. We were yeah, I one that. of, I think, three tribes that received it, and we were in consortium with the Chickasaw Nation. So that was a really big deal that we were able to be a part of that pilot program. Um, then we went ahead and we reapplied and as a consortium with the Chickasaw Nation. And so we were awarded again. And during that time, that's where they started to to build tribal consultations. And so out of that partnership and out of STEP, we kind of just were the forefront of tribal consultations and what those looked like with public schools. And so it was pretty cool because yesterday I had went to a tribal consultation in Moore, which was for the OKC metro area. And seeing where we originally started, where there was no discussion between schools and tribes, uh, where they have an entire day blocked off for us to discuss concerns, to discuss what um, what's working, what's not working in the schools. What do our urban students need and how they're spending those title funds? And so it was like, you know, literally an entire day of just discussion, sharing, going back and forth and what tribes we actually have to offer those schools. Yeah, that, there's, there was a man, there was a <laughs> that's a there's a whole there's a whole other podcast right in there. And what you just said, because I and I, I I love it when I'm interviewing someone here and I and they talk about something that I know a little something about because <laughs> sometimes I just don't. But uh, I, I love the fact, you know, you brought up. Uh, consultation with tribes when it as it as it uh, as it regards to uh, to education, and I, I know that like I said, my, many of my children are, are out of high school now, uh, but they went to more public schools, and I know I, I'm trying to remember I was somewhere around four, maybe thirteen or whatever. I started here in twelve also, but I know that I went to uh, 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 you know an Indian education meeting there, you know, 
and uh, the, the, the committee or whatever. And, you know, I, was, I had just been discussing here with the JOM people, and I was, I was learning the difference between JOM versus, at the time, I think it was Title VI or seven. I can't remember. They've changed that yes, back and forth. Yes, it's changed multiple yeah, times. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But but I but I was learning the difference between these federal funds are for this and these come from this, you know. And I was like, you know. And then once I kind of understood that, well, the schools are mandated to consult with the parents committee about how they spend that money, uh, because you know, or uh, uh, Otherwise, they could just spend it on, you know, the electric bill or the water bill or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think they're I, – I just I, – you know, listen to you and our executive director, Carrie Whittle, talk about these things. It's, it, it blows my mind that it's only been the last 10, 12 years or so that that's, those things have actually happened. And I'm, I don't – I'm saying they probably happened in the past, but all we all know also that there are some schools who – just didn't take it upon themselves really to, to do these proper consultations, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to be I'm not making a broad generalization here. I'm just saying that, you know, in in a state that has 39 tr- federally recognized tribes, those things weren't always happening, and it's it's been really uh, cool to see since I am in this education department now, to see uh, such an emphasis on on working with the schools. And I know, uh, you know, like I said, you know, talking about our director again, she's mentioned that there's a, you know, a town up the road. It's a very large tribal population that, you know, uh, that did not have a great uh, uh, relationship with the tribes until the last few years or so. And I'm, you know, I said, uh, you know, that's just, it's amazing that has happened now. And I think it's because of things like these grants that you're talking about, right? Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that, we can speak their language now. Yes, we absolutely. Un- we understand. Let's, let's, let, yeah, explain that. Well, you know, even understanding what those title grants are and what they mean. And, you know, a lot of times we go up and we um, complain and we gripe to the schools, but we don't understand also the restrictions that they're held to, where yeah. they're held back. Everyone at. has much, strings. Yes. <laughs> every, every piece of federal money has some strings attached. And, you know, and I... Um, Sitting in, uh, I got to actually do a um, audit with the State Department over some public schools, and they do reviews, and they're extensive. I mean, we were sitting in there watching them, and they were breaking down almost every penny of where this money was going and how it was spent. Um, we actually went and did um, school visits where we went to different schools in Oklahoma City, and they walked around, and I mean, they were checking classrooms, they were pulling students, they were visiting. I mean, they were literally going in investigating these schools and finding out how they're spending these funds. Are they being spent the appropriate way? And that educated us, again, on the questions we should be asking these schools and how they're spending their funds. And so now the schools, uh, we walk in and we're on the same playing level. Hey, we know what you should be doing. And so we're able to have more of a uh, one-on-one conversation just on the same playing field because now we have the knowledge that we didn't have before. What is that saying? Uh, if you're not, if you don't have a seat at the table, then, they're on, then you're on the menu? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. And that's, I mean, it's funny, but it's it's true in, in a sense that if you don't, if you, like I said, if it, it's, it's, you know, anybody could pull a chair up at the table, but if you don't know what folks are talking about, and uh, if you know, I, I mean, I think you have to just like uh, just you and I here. I have to, uh, you know, uh, if I don't really know what you're talking about, then we really can't have a very intelligent conversation. And I hope that's where we're going today. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I that, that's it, it's true. If if you don't, um, you know, what another we can throw it out analogies and phrases all day. If you can't, what's uh, you can't tell the players if you don't have a program or something like that. You know. It's uh, it's it's more than just being there, mm-hmm. and 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 raising your hand. I, I got a complaint. It's understanding how the how the thing works, uh, and I know that from the time that I spent and more with the parent committees, we had a a, a change in the uh, the more public administration. You know, with the because there there are different layers. I mean, there are uh, the there was a person who's like I think their title is like something like um, student services. Administrator, under and then underneath that person, there's a uh, Indian education person, and then there's people below there. And I'm like, oh, 
you know, if, if you have one uh, breaking that link or someone who doesn't quite get it, you know, the whole thing can fall apart. Yeah. So it, it's really great that to see that um, and that that uh, so many people, so many, so many people in this department alone have such a great working knowledge, and they're all uh, we're all pulling on the, seem to be pulling on the same rope now. You know, man, I'm just full of analogies and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. I it it's... and I and I love to see the I I I I enjoy it. I'm amazed to see the the push that this, this department is making towards towards making those things normal. Yeah. You know, one of the things that excites me is just the, we started out literally in three schools and they were schools that are then executive director, Teresa Dorsett um, had relationships with uh, and knew the superintendents or knew the people, you know, the administration in the school. And so that's what we started out with was three. We're not at 10 yeah. And that's a that's a really big deal. We've worked with other tribes before that have came in and they're like, how did you get in these schools? Like, how did you get these schools to let you in? How did you get these schools to let you walk in their doors regularly and come and see their students and talk and visit? And, you know, the biggest thing we told them was consistency. Yeah, it's a commitment. And, and it's hard because, you know, we all have lives. We get sick. We have kids. I mean, it, it, it gets it can get like overwhelming. And so, you know, there's days that sometimes like, hey, my kid's sick, I'm not going to make it. And someone else is stepping up like, hey, I'll go for you just to show like, hey, someone's going to be there. We are going to be there for those students. And man, those students get so excited to see our um, our staff. I mean, they were that was probably like the highlight of my day was walking in and those kids already knew like I was going to be there. They'd stop me in the hallway and be like, hey, are you going to pull me out of class today? <laughs> you know, just so they want to spend time to talk. Yeah. So it's been awesome watching this just kind of grow, like what the needs are of our students and addressing those needs. Uh, and, and and I know that it's you're talking about federal programs, but how does that work down to direct services? I mean, so... Um, yeah, how, I mean, I, I know you're working with Carrie, uh, so it's not really it's not really about just finding money, mm -hmm. finding federal money. It's it's kind of navigating the waters, right? Yeah, it's so the idea behind grants is that they usually give you a time frame, and you're building, um, basically building a program, and it's something that you want to see if it'll work in your tribe. And then after that, is it something your tribe wants to fund? That's what it comes down to. And so that's, you know, we've been fortunate. We've had STEP um, twice. And then, then we were fortunate we had NYCP. So we've had all these years to build just this knowledge of our presence in the school, how this is working. And now that led to AEE. Which I think you guys already got meet with the AEE ladies. Yeah, we did. They're oh, awesome. Let's, man. Let's go they back. are let's, such an awesome group. Tell me what NYCP stands for. The Native Youth Community Project. And then now we have AEE, which is the Academic Excellence and Enrichment Program. Okay, thank you. <laughs> for those of you who did not know, <laughs> and, AEE. Yes, and so the, I mean that was so exciting. But um, I was originally in NYCP, and that was one of my projects. All three of them were my projects, and but I have. Um, sat down with Carrie and I'm like, okay, what's next? We have this framework that we, we've we utilized in Clinton Public Schools. Now, what are we going to do next? And so her and I talked, brainstormed, and she had brought out a, con a consultant, Mario Molina, out of Arizona. And he had had this framework of AEE that he utilized out there. And so we have he came in educated us on it what it looks like and so this group of ladies is getting us off the ground and tailoring it to what it's going to look like for shiner apo country and so that's what's so exciting about it and that was the whole idea behind grants is getting us to this point to where hey we have a framework what's working what's not working these are what our students need and now we can build our own tribally funded program for our tribal students in these communities yeah and based on what you you've learned in the past however many years with federal with that federal money to help set up those set up the that that sort of not really infrastructure but the model mm -hmm. the, uh, the 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 knowledge yeah you you can't you can't really buy knowledge <laughs> i mean, yeah. I mean you, it it has to it just has to happen but it it doesn't happen without like you were saying commitment and the uh, consistency 
Uh, but to make those things happen, you got to have a little seed money to get those things going. That's what I think it's, uh, it's, it's what's great about this podcast and, and talking with different programs is we can uh, sit back and, uh, you know, day to day, no one's thinking about, I mean, well, I, yeah, people, I know people are thinking about it, but day to day, we're just doing day to day stuff because this is what has to be done. You know, I, something I shot last week got to be edited today, you know, that type of thing. And I know you guys, same, same way probably. It's like, well, before I can do, <laughs> I got to do A and B and C before I can even think about H, you know, H, you know, I, J, K, you know, that's how we you know things get stacked up. But I, it's, it's rare that, uh, except, except for in meetings, but it's something that's cool. It's something like this podcast. We can step back and take a larger view of the whole thing and say, and say, did you realize you guys are way back here and now we're way up here? You know, look mm-hmm. at the progress we've made. Uh, how often do you get a chance to do that? Um, you know, it's funny. Sometimes things pop up in my memories on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I see, you know, oh, my gosh, like I remember going to that conference. I remember sitting in there and just listening and learning. And then, you know, even sitting back and it's really it's it's been a struggle to watch what the State Department of Education is going through. Oh. Um, it, it, I oh, mean, it man. breaks my heart and, you know, cause I was, I was fortunate to be there with two state superintendents who really believed in native American education and Indian education in Oklahoma. And they were huge supporters of step. They were huge supporters of NYCP. And so, you know, I'm, I'm nervous just like a lot of other people are in Oklahoma about what is going on at the state department of education. And so, but that does give me an opportunity to look back and be like, I am so thankful that I was a part of that and that I got to learn from such like amazing people. You know, Dwight Pickering was in there and, you know, he really took me under his wing and educated me, talked to me, shared ideas with me, listened to me. And, you know, I still see him and, you know, I'm still happy to see him. You know, he came to my dad's services. Uh, yeah, I saw him. That's yes. Funny. And so, you know, he just gave me a big old hug. And, man, it just meant so much to me to see him there. But that was the kind of relationships that we had built with the State Department of Education. And so um, I do get a chance to look back and just kind of reflect on um, where I started because, you know, I'm uh, I'm not as loud and boisterous as my dad I'm a lot more kind of like quiet <laughs> and listen yeah. and how to pay attention and so um I, so with going into the state department as a young woman you know not knowing anything you know uh it's just thinking to myself like man I really walked in there and you know talked to these people I really walked in here and talked to some of the you know the People that control pretty much all the school districts and their funding. Yeah, they I make a lot of their big decisions. You know, Dwight. Dwight was. Uh, 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 we talked to him a number of times, and he was an advocate for what we were doing. And you know, then I then he left. I was like, oh my gosh, who are you guys going to find? And then you know, they bring in Julian, and he, he's so great. good. Now he's in D.C. Yes, <laughs> I mean, so, Julian was so, awesome. So uh, you know, we've been been, been fortunate in, in that regard. You know, I. I I hope you don't mind. You know, you mentioned your your dad, and uh, uh, he was a huge advocate for you know, education. And I'm tempted to hit the table. <laughs> I told you, but I can't tell you how many how many times did we go shoot video of him and he said, "Education, education." <laughs> like, because and and I, and I always I always wait. Like, I bet he's she goes, he's going to do it. Keep rolling. I know he's going to do it. <laughs> and I've told you before. Whenever we uh, went and recorded something where 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 Gib was speaking, we're like, whatever you do. Keep rolling, because you never know what he's going to say. But I, I, I said, I guarantee he's going to say something about his education. And so let's, you know, let's talk about that. Uh, oh, my gosh. I can I, say he, all kinds I, of things I mean, he that. just, uh, I, he, like I said, he was always one of our advocates, I felt like, of our of our program here, Sean and Rappo Productions. And uh, I, I, I just know that it, it seemed like any time any, any education functioned, he was there. I mean, head start, you know, on on up, to, and it, it seemed like he just seemed like he preached that all the time. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, it's funny. A lot of people didn't know he was my dad. Mm-hmm. Like, I, oh, is that right? <laughs> yes, I. Well, you I look still, so much alike. No. Well, and well, a lot of people. Um, I did my best to keep that separate. Yeah, I, I, hear I, you. I, I understand. You, that. you know, and so it was so funny because a lot of people will come on. They're like, I didn't even know that was your dad, and I'm like. 
Well, because I've heard you referred to him as Gib. Yes. You know, I'm like, well, I, <laughs> I so, would think you would call him Dad. Yes. And, um, but, you know, I just did that out of respect for him and out of respect for um, my position. And, you know, because uh, I was always worried that people would think that. You know, uh, I got to where I was yeah, because of him, you that. know, and but I always tell people I was here like long before he showed up. And so but, you know, my well, dad, probably not, yeah. but <laughs> not, not necessarily. But anyway. Um, but my dad, a lot of people don't realize. I don't know if you I don't know if you know my dad's story of how he got to where he's at. I know he, he always talked about he uh, he had a basketball scholarship. Yeah. Well, and he, he credits that with so much of the, the experiences he had early on, which uh, really contributed his overall view of things well you know education saved his life yeah I mean, i've heard him say he, that and he, i mean he literally meant it i um i actually went down with him before in the homes that he grew up in in downtown oklahoma city and you know my dad in an effort to get to school there would be a almost like a um oh gosh what do you call them a i don't want to say a semi but they'd be hauling stuff in the morning and he always knew when this one truck would come by and my dad would jump on the back of it and sit on it and that's how he would get halfway <laughs> to school and then he would jump off and finish walking the rest of the way but wow. he knew exactly what time that guy was coming by every day and the guy I guess didn't see him but my dad would wait when he hit the stop sign and my dad would jump on the back and ride with him down the road and then that's get, just being opportunistic you know? and so whatever he had to do to get there but he was always in a thirst for knowledge and he always wanted to know more and uh, basketball was a big part of it but him understanding how important a college education was and how yeah. important um having a career was you know he was an emt i remember i, I heard him say that yes, one time and i that oil, blew me away the oil business went bad and he was an emt and then he um got brave and started his own um, oil and gas company, Stalking Energy. And he started that when I was in fourth grade. And I remember, I mean, he worked tirelessly and that was his big thing. But he always pushed to us like, you know, he would always not say if you go to college, it's when you go to college, when you go to college. And so yeah, I, that was just put <laughs> into my head, you know, and I originally went to college for I wanted to be a lawyer. And after I got out, I'd been, I'd went four and a half years. I played basketball. And then um, I was like, I just need a break. Mm -hmm. Well, um, then I ended up working in um, part or working at a, oh gosh, enrollment. I worked in enrollment for uh, about a year and a half. And then I got married and had my son and stayed home with him for a couple of years. And then during that time, I worked with my dad in oil and gas so I got to have like two or three years of just like understanding how oil and gas works and understanding reading documents, reading um, contracts and correcting things and uh, really interacting with a lot of people. And so uh, Teresa called me. I remember it was like the day before my birthday. And that's how she asked me. She's like, hey, are you ready to come work? And I was all like, oh. I was like, yeah, she kind of explained it to me as me working with kids and. I was like, yeah, I can do that. I love kids. I love working with kids. So going back to just education with my dad, um, last spring, um, I was trying to think of how we could reach the most students and provide just the maximum services we could, not to our students, just not to our students here in Shiner Po Country, but uh, all our students out of state, out of district. Yeah, like there how, are a lot. How yeah. can we get to these students? And um, I had sat in on tri some tribal consultations and was hearing some of these um, other tribes, a few of them talk about uh, the online tutoring portals that they'd been utilizing. And so I started thinking about that, reaching out, contacting these different pro uh, uh, businesses about what they were offering and um, started talking to my dad about it about like, hey, this is kind of this is kind of what I want to do. This is my idea. And I mean, he was so excited. I mean, he just he just grasped it and he just ran with it. I think he was talking about it before I even could get everything rolling. And so he was like wanting to I love when that happens, right? Like, you know, you're like, like, I was thinking and someone goes, I've been thinking about that for years, you know? Oh, well no, <laughs> he would like uh they were at some kind of he was giving a speech somewhere and he had I'd found some of his notes and he had written Varsity tutors. And I'm thinking, I don't even have a contract with these people yet. Like, mm -hmm. why, why are you telling everybody about them? 
But that's just how excited that he was knowing that we would be able to get out to our students that don't live within the service area yeah. and get them tutoring. Because that is one thing we found within these federal grants is that one of the number one things that everybody's needing is tutoring. Yeah, and it's and huge. I uh, I know that you I've, I've I I heard you guys uh, were just recently I found out about this and actually I I, I meant to talk that about, about that at the beginning of this this podcast but we had other stuff well then Ben here we are uh, twenty five minutes in here we are <laughs> but no I I I just I I, mean, I heard that and I'm like really that that's a cool thing uh, tell I, well tell how does it work so basically what happens is is that there are is an online sign up with an online form you're going to fill it out and get it to me and it the it automatically comes to me and then i send your information on to varsity tutors um now, is that a that is a is that a nationwide pro, uh, yes it's a okay. nationwide program it's actually um you know you can look it up at www.varsitytutors.com and you can just kind of look at their entire website and from there, they have, this is what the tribe is pro uh, providing. And actually, the Oklahoma State Department of Education just purchased it. And it's going to be available to all students in Oklahoma. But it's 24-7 on-demand live chat tutoring. And Man, so, I could have used that well, big time. <laughs> what's so cool about it is, <laughs> is that, in school. <laughs> well, you, what's so cool about it is that if you really think about it, that's how most of our kids communicate. Yeah. These days. Yeah. yeah, they communicate via chat. I mean, in Snapchat, all kinds. They're always writing. There's not a whole lot of, like, talking. And yeah, so that's true. That's, like, a, a perfect opportunity for them to get um, tutoring. And so after they after you get signed up and the varsity tutors will send me your, your login information, and then I will send it on to the parents, and then they'll be able to help their student log on. The cool thing about this is is that it could be on a laptop. It could be on an iPad. It could be on a phone. As long as you're able to get on to varsitytutors.com, you can log in and start a chat session with them. And I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, also, the kids are going to be uh, eligible to be able to check out like enrichment courses. I was looking at it earlier, and they had um, drawing courses. If you're interested in drawing, beginner drawing, showing you walking it through it, you're in a class like an online video chat with no, somebody. No, that is really cool. And you're in there with like five or six other people, but you guys are following this person listening and you're like in a class, almost like a classroom setting. Um, they even have that set up with, uh, what was the other one I seen on there? Uh, dinosaurs, archaeology. Mm -hmm. um, they even have celebrity classes where they have celebrity teachers in there talking to you. Um, I don't even know who those people yeah. are yet, but so I was on there kind of looking at it and I, I'm really excited. I had, yeah. um, I'm kind of, uh, it's kind of, this is just kind of like our pilot year. We're going to see what it looks like and w how many students out of district are going to utilize it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to see how many people out of district take this opportunity and utilize it. But it's not, it's for, it's for in-district as well. Yeah, it's for yeah, in-district yeah. as well. And, and uh, how long, do you know how any, how long uh, varsity tutors have been around? I'm um, curious. They I mean, said, I think since like the early 2000s. Okay, okay. I, it seems like I had heard of them before, but not, I you know, out here, you know, it's like, I was like, well, how are we going to do this? So I'm like, I, I you know, me, I was thinking, when are, the, when are our people going to have time to tutor people online? I'm, oh, we couldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so, but... Uh, when, how this is exciting. How soon is this going to be on, on quote on, you know online or available? It's already available. We, we oh kicked, when did it start? We kicked off um, uh, January. I think it was January oh, 3rd. just this year. Yeah, just wow. this year. We got uh, everything's on online. You just need to get on and go to the link. Look on our Facebook page and our Twitter page, and the, the link will be on there. And you just have to get on there, fill everything wow. out. How now? When are you going to start uh, collecting data on and? Who's uh, using it and how many kids are using it? I'm hoping to start collecting it monthly. Mm -hmm. I would like to keep track of how many yeah, you, people yeah, we yeah, have obviously. utilizing it and, you know, how many people that we're reaching. And I think that's the big thing is that, um, you know, our in-district people, you know, I love our people. You know, I, I love being shy in their Apaho. And, um, but, man, I really want to figure out a way to get to those out-of-district um, tribal members. And yeah. students. Yeah, like, absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm hoping, that, you know, uh, like I said, we just started this podcast uh, about three, two or three months ago. And we were up to, what, a dozen episodes or more? Um, our, our, our hope is, you know, once we get it and, and you, you get, it takes a while to build a brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
what's great about this is like we're um, we're obviously we're shooting video of this, so that will be on YouTube. But the uh, just the audio version, like a regular podcast, will, is going to be available on a number of streams, a number of platforms. And I, our producer Hawk would know, but around a dozen, you know, close to a dozen platforms, which I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I just think all these people are going to hear our voices. Yeah, that's, oh gosh. <laughs> so, so, but the great thing is, is like you know, hopefully it'll be shared and liked and recommended, and that's hopefully that's how we'll help you guys get the word out about this online tutoring. Yeah, I mean, I yesterday sitting in tribal consultations, they had videos and of students of urban. Uh, Native students, and you know, and some of the things they said, um, like just wanting to have more of their tribe present, you know, because Oklahoma City is in that like no zone. There's no tribes, yeah, within that area. And there are there are a ton of tribes there. Are, I mean, there aren't just 39 represented. There's probably a hundred or so, but you know, there's there's no tribes. Uh, headquartered in Oklahoma City, really. Yeah. You know. And so and I'm hoping that this is just an opportunity to really reach them and um, students get signed up and that they utilize it. They utilize that tutoring because I really think it could be beneficial for them and just give them just a little bit of assistance, a little bit of boost because, you know, those COVID years really hurt a lot of kids. Yeah. And that's something, you know, I, as an adult, you know, I, I, th- I was thinking – Thank God I dealt with something like that. And my kids, well, my son was still, he's uh, still, uh, he's got another year left at, at OU. He finishes, you know, because, but before when COVID happened, you know, they, everything was shut down and he did online for a semester. And he, finally he said, I'm not doing this. I said, I don't blame you. I, 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 I have to have some sort of face to face, you know? So, yeah, I, and I was like, you know, it, it, we're just, and I, you know, you think, okay, it's over. Once the pandemic was over, we all said, okay, everything's back to normal. Well, no. Just think, there are kids now, there's a whole, uh, not generation, but a whole group of kids who, you know, not only were robbed of senior prom and all yeah. those trips, but they were robbed of face-to-face interaction during their sophomore and junior. And senior, I mean, I, we're just, I, and, I, and I, you know, you don't think we're probably, we'll, we'll see the results of that and then the repercussions of that for, you know, years to come. Oh, yeah. Uh, because if those kids were in first grade when it happened, you know, I mean, just think, I mean, uh, does that mean that they're going to play, we're going to have to play catch up until they graduate? You know, I that's something as, a, as adults, I don't, we don't really think about that because we weren't in it like that. You know, and the thing is you have to remember about kids is that um, they're really resilient. Yes. And their brains are, I mean, they... They work a they lot better learn, than ours. <laughs> and they learn so much faster than we do. So, and so, so it, the, the catch-up time isn't as extensive as we thought it was going to be. I mean, it's there. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, they're they're working really hard to get on grade level. And the teachers are working really hard to help them get on grade yeah. level. Yeah. That, but it, but it's it's like it's, it's still there. And I'm like, I forget about it because I wasn't, you know, we weren't in school Thank God, school was a long time ago for me. You know? um, I tell people, I said, you know, uh, you know, when I was 18, I thought I knew everything. But when I was 21, I was sure I knew everything. But now as an older dude, I realize I don't know <laughs> squat. And <laughs> I'm like, if I can just learn a little something every day like we're doing right here, I think I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, we're, uh, I'll say, okay, I'm so glad we, I'm glad you brought that up because that's the, the online tutoring thing is I really I meant to talk to you about that <laughs> at the beginning, but hey, here we are. So um, that that is in place now, and is is that uh, is that on a is that a thing where we're trying it as a pilot for? I think you you did mention it was a pilot program. Yes, it is a pilot program. So we're we gonna try that for a year and then see how it works. And yeah, we're gonna see how many students sign up for it, how many are utilizing it, and then we'll kind of go we'll go from there and what the future purchase looks like okay. and that's something that we're going to purchase in the future which i'm hoping that you know that's what we do and we continue to do that because like i said it's a big need tutoring is such a big need and you know yeah. i've had so far i think i've had over 20 people sign up um it's been kind of slow getting people to get signed up but you know three of them have been college students and so that's a big deal because college students they do need a lot more tutoring you know uh, one of the cool things on there is essay review 
You, oh, man. You, you submit an wow, essay. Wow, I could have used that. Yes. I was thinking, <laughs> man, I could have too. Um, you submit an essay and they will review it and they'll give you suggestions and mark it up and send it back to you. And it's someone you can trust. Yes. <laughs> Not your roommate or something like that. <laughs> yes. And so that's what I'm hoping a lot of people look that's on great. there and re- utilize and realize like, hey, there are some things on here that we could really use. Yeah. And, you know, I've got my kids signed up and I'm already thinking to myself, I'm like, you're going to be getting on here doing this. They have class. Like I said, they have classes. I'm I think I'm signing up my um, my third grade daughter. There's a bridge and reading class, and it's on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. for one hour. And so I think we're gonna like try that out and sign her up for that and have her sit through that because they do interactive games and stuff with them and help them kind of just become uh, more uh, confident in their reading. And so, I mean, you can always get additional reading assistance. Um, it, you hit you hit confidence yesterday, or I'm losing track, but. Just recently, the, the the respect program was in here, and and one thing, and I think we we talked about the same thing when um, uh, AEE was in here, and and we mentioned you know, um, not even just native kids, but sure native kids, but kids in general, um, you, you know we you, so let's say you have let's say you're teaching, and you have a class of thirty kids, there's no I mean. Uh, and you only get to spend you know that much time with each one of them you know it. On a daily basis, it's trying. It's so hard to. You're never going to know the backstories of all thirty of those kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, every one of those backstories is going to be so incredibly different. And so, you know, it, it may not be the kids' fault that they couldn't get to school ever on time every day. It's, you know, the fault of you know the family and their situation. And and uh, I, I think uh, someone and I forget which program it was mentioned. You know, it's all a lot of it's about building those kids' confidence. You know, um, uh, just like you said, you know, maybe that it, it maybe maybe you're not the best reader, but I know that you know. I grant I was in school a long time ago, but they, <laughs> but I'm still they still. I mean, you probably still read in class, and I remember there were some kids who weren't very, they weren't good readers, and when they when it was their turn. Uh, it was just painful to watch and painful. As another kid, I was like, "Ah, oh, don't make this kid read because he can't. He's not very good at it." Yeah. And I felt sorry. I'm like, I wish I could help this kid because because I was like, because like and at the time I was like, because I can't read. But I mean, like you know, <laughs> I've, I've, I, you know, I'm saying how kids are. But I was like, I was really, why would the teacher even put them on the spot like that? Because they, we've had, you know, I was like, we're halfway through the year. They know that kid can't read very well. Don't make you know. I'm just saying those th- things like that, that can have a big effect. Uh, let's say that happened in first, second grade. Well, you know, the kid's not going to want to read. How many did you, um, when you were younger, because I, I know I didn't, did you have just the teacher in the classroom? Uh, yeah, and okay. sometimes, sometimes we had an aide. Okay, yeah. well, aides are a big thing now. And so a lot of times those teachers, that was going to be the only way they could help yes, someone read. Yes. And also teaching you to be comfortable speaking out loud in front of a group. That's a big and, thing with, but, with kids as well. Yeah, I, I hated reading I was terrible at it. I hated reading out loud. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I could read, but I didn't like reading out loud because sometimes I would stutter because yeah, I'd, I'd like start talking too fast. Um, but... That's one thing that I've noticed in schools now that they break up into groups. And a lot of times they'll break you up into groups by your skill level. And so if you're See, like, I like a, that idea. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, but schools are um, putting more money to putting aids in there with the teachers yeah. so they can Everything help break costs. them up. Golly. It does. And, you know, they're using their, a lot of their title funds to do that, mm-hmm. which isn't, that's a smart move. It really is a smart move. It really is. But I think it's about, you know, it's about giving those, you know, and, got, you know, some kids are terrible in reading. Some are terrible at math. Some are mm-hmm. terrible at uh, English, you know, and, and those type of things. You know, uh, and talking about confidence, um, you know, I was talking to my son about that last night was having confidence. And, you know, I started thinking to myself, I, I made a rule for myself when he plays sports is that when he's after the game, he come, usually comes up to me and um, his dad and I lean in and I tell him um, the three things I seen he needed to correct. And then I give him a kiss on the forehead and I don't say nothing else. Yeah. I tell him I love him. Good job. And sometimes I think as parents and even like teachers and school administrators, ask yourself what one positive thing oh. do you think your Preach. child has Preach. heard today? Yeah. 
what is one positive thing your child has heard today? And so I'm like, as a parent, I really try to work on that. Me and my husband do of trying to speak more life into our children instead of death. That's what I call it. Speak life. Don't speak death. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I even think to myself, I'm like, what positive thing have I heard today? And, that, and that's, well, I'm saying it's, <laughs> it starts with ourselves too. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I've been guilty of it here and there, you know, I mean, I mean, obviously sometimes I joke about it, you know, mm -hmm. just yesterday we were talking, I was telling about somebody, we were talking about, you know, respect program. And I said, I said, look, everybody's an athlete like me, you know, <laughs> and I was like, you don't want me playing basketball. You don't want me on your team, you know, I mean, but I know I the thing is you, uh, I, 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 and I, I, we talk about it all the time. You know, I, you have to be careful what you say to kids because, um, the positive, the one positive, the really good positive thing that you say that could be the the only positive thing they've heard all week yeah or all month really and i'm like oh man and and you know and and when you when you think about that you're like man as adults we have we got to be responsible for our kids and other people's too well yeah that's that's the that's what that's how you are a good human you know I could talk about kids all day. I, I've, <laughs> I mean, I've just, I was then thinking, I was like, we're sitting here talking about this. And I'm thinking, man, I've sat through so many trainings and um, just learning and lessons of working with kids and how kids are affected and just the, how their brains work. You know, it's crazy. A lot of people don't realize this and uh, it drives me insane, but do you realize that our brains are not fully developed until 25 years old? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I really, it, they are not like fully developed to make critical decisions until we're 25 years old. But yet we are, but, they're voting at 18. I, know. <laughs> they're, I mean, and I was thinking that the and other day. I was think thinking, man, I graduated from college. I was starting my own life and I wasn't even like well, like developmentally, mentally prepared for that. And I look back and I'm like, I can't believe y'all let me drive at 16. Yes. And I was like, what were y'all thinking? Hey, but you know, uh, I, 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 so to bring it all full circle here, federal programs administrator, but yet um, you're coming at a, from a place where yeah, it, you're starting way up here at the federal level, but we're trying to work at where we can get these direct services to uh, our native kids, mm -hmm. and, and not and and not just native kids, but that's where we want to begin. And uh, it sounds like it looks like you enjoy your job. I, I I love kids. Yeah, I love kids. I don't so much love sitting behind a desk, but I love kids. Yeah, who wants to do that? Yeah, I'm glad there are people who do that because I don't want to do it. <laughs> I want to do other stuff. Uh, well, Megan, it's it's been a it's been fun. It's been a pleasure. Did, I, did we miss anything? Did, uh, sure. <laughs> don't tell me there's something else I missed there. I don't think so. I think I've said everything I need to say. Well, real quickly, what <laughs> is there anything else on the horizon that you guys got planned? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've had them come in yet, but I'm pretty excited to hear um, how our the new step program is working and what their framework is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the idea, um, which I don't want to share too much, is that down the road we want to have our own school. See, I wasn't going to bring that up, but since you did, I, that's that's exciting. Oh man! And I just can't wait. I, I don't. I don't know when you're bringing uh, Carrie and um, the rest of the step ladies yeah. in, but I'm. That's going to be an exciting conversation, and yeah. I really just hope that a lot of people will listen in and just get educated on that. I know. I. I. It's like I said. You know, I. I've worked in, in TV news all those years before, and. That's a whole other world, you know. Uh, but then here you know, I'm in the education department, and I was like, when we first started, I was like, why don't we have to go all these education conferences? Well, now I know. I mean, it's like that's what we do, you know. But no, it's uh, I I we I think Carrie was on. We discussed it a little bit, mm -hmm. but but yeah, I I look forward to that discussion where we can really, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, Take all the meat off of that bone, you know, yeah, so, and I'm really get into the discussion. It's going to be exciting. And it like is. I said, all it is. It's an exciting time to be here at this department. All these things have, starting from the original step grant, have gotten us to where we are now. Yeah. And just think you, know, you had a hand in it. And well, yeah, I did. But I'm excited to see what these ladies are going if to do. If I can do reach you, I'll pat you on the back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see what these right. ladies are going to do with this knowledge and oh, where we're going to go from now. Megan, thank you so much. Yeah. It has been. Uh, See, it went by quickly, right? You were a little nervous that it would, and I was a little nervous because it's only me and you. Normally, have like four or five people here, but it was oh, a good time. You know, I always feel like Gibbs right by me, and he's making me <laughs> laugh too. <laughs>
All right. Well, you know what? It's been a great show. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate I you did. guys for having me. Yes. So we will talk to you and see you next time on the next Shine Unwrap Productions podcast. See you. <laughs>